Anytime you raise a number to the zero power, you get one back. So let me give you some examples. 10,000 to the zero power, just going to give you one. 30 to the zero power, just going to give you one. Anything raised to the one power gives you the number back. All right, so 50 to the first gives you 50 back. Negative 101 to the one power gives you negative 101. Okay. What about negative exponents? Because those kind of those tend to, to confuse students. These these two rules right here you should have down. But let's check out the negative exponents. A to the negative one equals one over a to the one, which we know is just one over a. So what's going on here? The negative exponent is telling you put it in the bottom and raise it to the positive exponent. A to the negative two. That's one over a squared. So I don't want to over explain this. Let me just do some examples and I promise you it's going to kick in real fast. What if I have 3 to the negative 6? That's 1 over 3 to the 6 power. 4 to the negative 5, 1 over 4 to the 5th power. Let me do one with a variable. x to the negative 9, 1 over x to the 9th power. So again, just to recap, the negative exponent tells you put it in the denominator and raise the number to the positive exponent. This negative number or this negative exponent has nothing to do with the sign of the number. Okay, let's move on to the next topic. You should know what happens to the fractions when you square them, you cube them, you raise them to the fourth power. So I have one half here. What happens to a half when you square it? Well, it gets smaller, but let's just show that. A half times a half right we just multiply across gives us a fourth so we should know that any time you have a fraction less than one all right uh, a half a third a fourth and you square it you cube it it's gonna get smaller the opposite's true when you have an integer and this this should make sense to you guys three squared you get nine four squared you get sixteen so all those numbers get bigger all right now we have a situation where maybe that's not always true and that's kind of the next little mini lesson I'm giving you guys and that's with negative numbers so let's move that up and we'll talk about negative numbers when you have a negative number to an even power it gives you a positive number back when you have a negative number to an odd power it gives you a negative number back okay so let's just do an example negative two squared well that's negative two times negative two which gives you four. We got a positive number back. What happens when I do negative two cubed? I get negative two times negative two times negative two. That's four. So four times negative two? Negative eight. Now some of you guys out there may be going, okay, what was the point of me showing that to you guys? Well, let's say on the SAT, you get some type of question where it says, I don't know, negative six to the 471st power. Would you really want to calculate that? Probably not. But you should know that we have a negative number being raised to an odd power. So that's going to give us some negative number. Okay, let's talk about some rookie mistakes here. Things that you guys want to avoid doing. If you have a plus 2 squared, that does not equal a squared plus 2 squared. a minus 2 squared does not equal a squared minus 2 squared. Okay, you have to FOIL in these situations, so you have to do your double bubble. Okay, so that's a plus 2, a plus 2, this is a minus 2, that's a minus 2. So you always have to do your double bubble, you gotta FOIL. Let's check out the other rookie mistake. Okay, if you have 3 to the a plus 3 to the a plus 3 to the a, that does not equal 3 to the 3a you must factor in this situation. So don't get confused and, and the, tr the trap is that you, you, you add all the exponents. Well you can only do that when you're multiplying numbers with like bases. We're adding here. So this is what you're going to do. I'm just going to rewrite it. So you're going to take out what, what uh, is the biggest factor or the, what's the biggest common factor between these numbers. So that's 3 to the a. So I put that on the outside. I put my brackets now I gotta figure out 3 to the a times what gives me 3 to the a. Well, that's just 1. 
3 to the a times what gives me 3 to the a, 1 again, and it's going to be 1 again. So that's 3 to the a times 3. So you should know that this expression and this expression are the same exact thing. Okay, let's try an example. Let's see if any of these rules are kicking in and making sense. Okay, so this example says if a and b are both positive and a to the negative one-fourth equals one-half and b to the negative two equals four, what is the value of a, b? So if you want, you could pause this on your screen right now, pause the video, attempt it on your own. I'm going to go into the explanation right now. Okay, so it says, what is the value of a, b? So it's probably a good idea to find a and b by themselves. So let's start to do that. I'm going to rewrite the a expression, a to the one-fourth equals a half. a to the one-fourth is the same as one over a to the fourth. We should know that now. Set that equal to a half. Now I have two fractions set equal to one another. Cross multiply. So that's a to the one-fourth equals two. Now the question is how do I get rid of that one-fourth power? I'm going to raise both sides to the four. When I do the left, I have to do the right. Power raised to a power, we multiply. So that's just a to the one, right? Which is just a. A fourth times four is one. And two to the fourth is 16. Okay, so we found A. Let's go and find B. So I'm going to rewrite the B expression. B to the negative 2 equals 4. B to the negative 2 is 1 over B squared. And I'm going to put that 4 over 1 so it's a little easier to see that we can cross multiply what we're doing. So that's 4B squared equals 1. Divides both sides by 4. And we get b squared equals one-fourth. How do I get rid of that b squared? Take the square root of both sides. And you can do this on a calculator, but uh, it's pretty easy to see that b equals a half. That makes sense, right? A half times a half gives you a fourth. So if a is 16, b is a half, a, b will be, <laughs> a, b will be, 16 times a half, or eight. Okay, so if you need to review that explanation, you can definitely, uh, you know, bring the, bring the video back a minute and go over the explanation again if that was too fast for you. Let's do another example. Okay, so we're going to do another example this time. And just give me a second to get the page in order here. Okay, that's nice. It says, if 3 to the 2x plus 3 to the 3x plus 3 to the 4x equals y, which of the following is equal to y over 3 to the 2x? So again, you can pause the video right now. You can attempt it on your own. I'm going to go into the explanation. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do this by factoring. So let me rewrite my expression on the top there. Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out the biggest thing that's in common between these numbers. So that's going to be 3 to the 2x. They all share at least 3 to the 2x. I can't forget this whole thing is equal to y. I'll put that there. So 3 to the 2x times what gives me 3 to the 2x? 1. 3 to the 2x times what gives me 3 to the 3x? This is a little harder to see. So my recommendation to you is first, just put the base down. So when we multiply with like bases, we add the exponents. So 2x plus what gives me 3x? Just x. You're going to do the same thing for the last number. Put the base down. So we have like bases, 3 times 3. We add the exponents. 2x plus what gives me 4x? That has to be 2x. All right, so now I have what's in the brackets. I'm going to divide by 3 to the 2x. Divide by 3 to the 2x. That crosses out. And I find that 1 plus 3 to the x plus 3 to the 2x equals that whole thing. And that is choice E. So again, this is the solution by factoring. You can definitely do this a couple different ways. You can plug in numbers for the x values. You can you know, choose some numbers. Or you can divide everything on the left by 3 to the 2x and do the same thing on the right. A couple different ways to do it. I just wanted to show you the factoring way.